Thank you for joining us here at AxiFlow Technologies as we review the disassembly, evaluation, and reassembly of the AxiFlow Sanitary Twin Screw Positive Displacement Pump. All pumps are specifically designed to achieve optimal results for the processes in which they were selected. This is accomplished by using specific data gathered during the selection process. Your pump will have a nameplate attached to the bearing housing. The information on the nameplate will list serial number, model number, and expected conditions during operation. The pump model numbers will contain the size of the pump and the feed screw set that were selected. Each pump model has a range of feed screw pitches available for varying pump capabilities. Here is an overall description of the pump. Starting at the back of the pump is the gear cover. This can be either Teflon coated aluminum or stainless steel. Located on the gear cover is the timing gear access cover, oil level sight glass, oil breather, and drain plug. The bearing housing contains three angled ball bearings, a bearing spacer, and one needle bearing on each shaft. In the wet end of the pump are three sections. First is the intermediate flange. Located in this area are the mechanical seals, mechanical seal flush ports, and the suction or discharge connections. The next section is the pump casing. With the feed screws operating here, this is the flow rate and pressure generating area. Last is the front cover which holds the wet end together and provides either suction or discharge connection depending upon your flow direction. The following is the wet end disassembly. It is important to note any positional end identification markings on the parts. All rotation and parts position references will be from the point of view looking at the pump from the motor fan forward. No metal hammers or prying instruments should be used in the disassembly or reassembly of this pump. The use of dead blow or rubber hammers are allowed, but should not be necessary. Remove the cap nuts and washers from the end cover. Remove the end cover and inspect the installed form ring gasket and alignment pins. Remove the pump casing by slightly lifting and sliding off using the tension bolts. Over time, the fit may become tight with the alignment pins. If this is the case, using a dead blow or rubber hammer may be necessary. Inspect the alignment pins and verify the location of the VS marking. The VS will be on the bottom position if the pump drive shaft is turning clockwise or in the top position if the pump drive shaft is turning counterclockwise. With the alignment pins installed, it is not possible for the VS marking to face the wrong direction. Please note the pump should not be operating without the alignment pins in place. This could cause damage to the feed screws and the pump casing. To remove the feed screws, use a soft piece of metal, aluminum or brass, to block the screws from turning. Then remove the tension nuts. All of the threads are standard right hand configuration. Once the feed screws are removed, carefully slide the process side mechanical seal rotating units off of the shafts. Inspect these parts for damage to the faces and elastomers. Then remove and inspect the process side 
mechanical seal stationary units. Please note when removing the feed screws, always note the information on the ends of the feed screws, part numbers and positional data. Now inspect the flange gasket on the intermediate flange. Remove the two socket head bolts. Slide the intermediate flange by slightly lifting and pulling evenly. This may also require the use of a dead blow or rubber hammer for removal. Next is the removal and inspection of the mechanical seal housing. Remove the four socket head cap screws Then by pushing from the inside, remove the mechanical seal housing. It may be necessary to assist in this removal by using either a dead blow, rubber hammer, or the jacking bolt holes on the housing flange can be used. Along with other mechanical seal evaluation, please check all faces for nicks, cracks, scratches, and broken portions of the mechanical seal. The mechanical seal design and configurations are determined by the end user requirements and the application operating conditions. Seal face material options are silicon carbide and tungsten carbide in the process area. Carbon and silicon carbide are used for double seals on the atmospheric area. When using a single mechanical seals, the processed liquid will be used for seal lubrication. In this configuration, the recommendation is not to run the pump dry of processed liquid. When it is necessary to run the pump dry of processed liquid, a double mechanical seal with flushing capabilities is recommended. This flushing media can be any process compatible fluid or steam sterilization for aseptic processing. If using a flush seal, for dry running is not an option, it is recommended to use the tungsten carbide knife's edge seals. The difference in the seal width decreases the friction on the seal faces during a dry running condition. However, this is for short periods of operation only. Long term operation will result in damage to the seal faces and elastomers. When evaluating the mechanical seal housings, inspect the elastomers and housing components. Note the notches on the back of the seal faces. These are to keep the faces from rotating inside the housing. Also for the double seals, it enables a pathway for the seal flush to fill and exit the seal flush chamber. If the notches are not in the proper location, this will cause damage to the stationary seal faces as well as insufficient flushing of the seal flush chamber. Check the feed screws for abnormal wear along with any nicks, gouges, or contact between the feed screw flanks. These would indicate a pump that has been overpressurized, that is out of timing, or has had foreign material pass through the wet end. Check the pump casing for abnormal wear with any nicks, gouges, or contact between the feed screws and the pump casing. This would also indicate the pump has been overpressurized or has had foreign material passed through the wet end. This begins the pump assembly narrative. Apply a light coat of food grade non-petroleum based grease on all elastomers. Using even pressure, pushing straight down, insert the mechanical seal housing into the intermediate flange. Mm -hmm. 
Install the four socket head cap screws in each housing. Inspect and install the form ring seal. Replace if necessary. Insert the mechanical seal stationary rings into the mechanical seal housing. One set for single mechanical seals, two sets for double mechanical seals. Ensure all alignment pins are in place. The pump cannot operate without these pins in place. If the pump requires a double mechanical seal, slide the atmospheric rotating unit with the backing ring, O-ring, and seal face onto the shaft. Slide on the intermediate flange with little or no force should be required. If force is necessary, inspect the alignment pins between the bearing housing and the intermediate flange for damage. Install two socket head bolts and tighten to the recommended torque. Install process rotating portion of the mechanical seal. Check seal inspection to include the inner o-ring if it is a double mechanical seal. This o-ring is not required for a single mechanical seal. For proper feed screw orientation, please refer to page 5 of the disassembly and reassembly O&M manual. This configuration is exclusive to each pump and application. This will determine your motor rotation and your flow direction of the pump. Cradle screws and gently push them onto the shaft. Inspect the tension nut seals, lightly lubricate, and install. Please note, it is very critical to properly torque tension nuts. The required torque values can be found on page 10 of the Disassembly and Reassembly O&M Manual. Once assembled, manually rotate the pump in both directions to ensure there is no binding or metal contact.
using a feeler gauge show the clearance between the feed screw flanks. Installing the pump casing, please note that the VS indicator can be in the top or bottom location. This will be determined by the pump drive shaft rotation while viewing the pump assembly from the drive end. If the drive shaft is turning clockwise, the VS marking is positioned on the bottom. If the drive shaft is turning counterclockwise, the VS marking will be positioned on top. This can also be referenced on page 5 of the Disassembly and Assembly Operating and Maintenance Manual. Slide on the pump casing. Little or no force should be required. If force is necessary, please inspect the alignment pins on the intermediate flange and pump casing for damage. Ensure all alignment pins are in place. The pump cannot operate without these pins in place. Once mounted, use two spacers to tighten down the pump casing. Then use a feeler gauge to check the clearance between the pump casing and the feed screws. Note this measurement and contact AxiFlow Technologies to determine if there is any unusual wear. After the clearances are checked and verified, uh, remove the spacers, inspect the end cover form ring seal, and make sure the alignment pins are present. Replace the form ring seal if necessary. The end cover can be installed two ways. To be 3A compliant, and most installations have the bottom of the connection even with the bottom of the pump to ensure free draining. Install the clamping nuts and washers and tighten to the required torque value that can be found on page 10 of the disassembly and reassembly operation and maintenance manual. This is the procedure for evaluating and adjusting the timing for the AxiFlow twin screw positive displacement pump. First, remove the end cover and the pump casing. This allows the feed screws to be visible. Use a feeler gauge to check the clearance between the feed screws. Next, remove the timing cover on the back of the pump above the gears. Once this is removed, a visual inspection of the gears will be possible. On the driven shaft there will be bolts holding the timing gear to the timing gear bushing. Loosen, do not remove these bolts. This will allow the timing gear to move independently from the drive gear. Once the timing gear adjustment bolts are loose, you will be able to move the drive shaft feed screw and the driven shaft feed screw independently, allowing for some clearance between the feed screws. Use a feeler gauge to measure the complete clearance in between the screw flanks. Once you establish the clearance number, Reduce that by half, and that will be the clearance in between each flank. Adjust your feed screws so you're showing half of that total amount of clearance in between 
each feed screw. Once this is finished, tighten up one timing gear adjustment bolt to allow the pump to be free turning with the adjustment in place. If there is no contact between the feed screws, proceed in tightening up all of the timing gear adjusting bolts. Once all of the timing gear adjusting bolts are tightened and the clearance between the feed screws is sufficient, then replace the cover and gasket for the timing gear adjustment and then replace the pump casing, pump end cover, Torque the end cover bolts and nuts down to the specified torque value on page 10 of the disassembly and reassembly pump O&M manual.